Okay, so let's look at the big point that the author of Judges makes, because it's great to have these stories about the way God you know, brings to light things that have crept up on his people and points out to them and so on, very important. And it's great to have stories about Samson tying foxes' tails together and certain fight that call us brilliant story. And then it's great to have stories about, you know, somebody reaching for the fresh red jawbone of an ass and killing a thousand, three thousand Philistines. Um, we get the thousands correct there. Uh, what's the big point? Was that in the Bible? Of course there are the warnings about assimilation, of course there are the warnings about not you know, standing up for right and all the rest of it. What's the big point? Okay, if you and I are telling a story, where do we make the point? At the end. Thank you, dear. We make the point at the end, don't we? Yeah, the end's coming. We make the point at the end. Because that's what it's there for. That's how it works, isn't it? You tell the story, you get the interest, you put people to sleep, and then, at the end, bosh! There's the point. What's the big point the author of Judges is making here? Verses 18 to 20. After all of that, Samson was thirsty. Because he was very thirsty, he cried out to the Lord, the covenant-keeping God. You've given your servant this great victory. Must I now die of thirst and fall into the hands of the uncircumcised? Then God opened up the hollow place in Lehi and water came out of it. And when Samson, Lehi means uh, like a mortar, pestle and mortar. It's the bowl you grind things in. And this shape of land opens up. And when Samson drank, his strength returned and he revived. So the spring was called En Hakore, the one who calls. The, the, the spring of the one who calls. And it's still there in there. The big point that the author of Judges is making, after all Samson did, was that all that Samson did was done with God. Samson was weak in himself. Samson was vulnerable in himself. Especially after a haircut that we're going to see later on. But clearly, as seen here, he's vulnerable all the time until the Spirit of God comes on. Now that the big battle is over and the spirit has departed again, a bit of a reaction seems to have set in. Huge energy deployed in the battle has left Samson with a fierce thirst and it bothers him, it worries him that he might now succumb in that desert place of dehydration with Philistines returning to mistreat and mutilate his corpse. He's collapsed after the big physical and spiritual exertion of that episode. He is not superhuman. We are not superhuman. But our God is more than superhuman. And what we're able to do, we do through Him. Ordinary people who put their trust in Him. Even to the extent that Samson does by letting himself be bound and led out to the Philistines long before the Spirit of the Lord comes upon him. That's an act of tremendous faith that God is actually going to step in. Those people end up doing really extremely superhuman things. You get that, don't you? The Spirit of God hasn't come on Samson when he's being bound in that cave at Eta. He's got to rely on being bound there. The Spirit of God will come on him when he faces the Philistine. He's got to stick his neck out first. Have you any clear idea of what you're capable of on your own? Because it's not a lot. And have you any idea what you can do when the Spirit of God comes upon you? 